Okay, so this is um, <coughs> information architecture, IBE 312. And um, <coughs> everything that you will need to know about information for this course, you can find starting from this page. And there's several ways to find the page. You can either type in the address, which is course info dot pmolda dot no slash in dash truth <coughs> ibe three twelve slash two hundred thirteen. I I wasn't able to create a new folder, so I put everything in the same folder slash truth. <coughs> um, or let's see. You can go to Hemoldex. Do you know about Hemoldex? You go to uh, 44 themes, and you go down to IBE 312, and then you have to immediately shut off the video if you don't want to hear it. <laughs> and then uh, the theme material for the course is here. I think you can also turn it on in English, but anyway, so for material for the course, you get to the English page. <coughs> so um, everything comes back to here. And um, one of the things I need to go through right away, yes, it's, I think it's working. <laughs> yeah. It works. Good. <laughs> okay. <coughs> um, Okay, so we have uh, the this is the standard uh, course description in the study handbook. This is Fronter. We don't really make use of Fronter that much, um, so I always point things back to here. This is important: the lecture schedule. Okay, um, I have to be away uh, for the month of September. And that means that you're going to be not meeting for lecture in the month of September. So this is today. We're going to have the introductory lecture. You get to know how it works. And then uh, the next four <coughs> lectures you get to read on your own. <coughs> and then there's some videos that were recorded last year. <coughs> And I'm going to show you how to find the video recording. <coughs> now, <coughs> there was a problem last year <coughs> with <coughs> part of this recording. <coughs> and it, <coughs> it wasn't just my voice either. It was, uh, it was the equipment. Um, and the uh, video recording, uh, but it still has much of the lectures from uh, chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then when we come back, the first lecture, I will review chapters 5 and 6 again because that's the recording that's not so good. So basically, you're going to be on your own for chapters 3, 4, and then a little bit 5 and 6. We also have some uh, weekly exercises that you can do on your own. We don't they don't get graded, okay? But if you do them and you send them to me, I can give you comments on them. So if you have some, com if you want to get some feedback, you can get feedback. And then uh, when I come back, we have the standard uh, lectures, and we have three required exercises. So exercise number one and exercise number two are October 22nd and November 5th. And then exercise number three is um, uh, the last lecture. Let me see. Um, yeah, it's yes, this uh, lecture period, November 26th. Okay. In exercise number three, you'll be presenting or working in group and presenting what you did. Okay. <coughs> So this is uh, the lecture schedule, and that's there. And then the required materials, uh, this uh, book, and I showed you 
or you can get this book, you can get it in the bookstore, or you can get it online if you look for it. This one uh, is not required, and if we talk about it, it will be out of parts of the material that's online. Um, these are the notes that I'll be using in the lectures and if I make any addition to this uh, note set I will put it here so today it doesn't I don't know for some reason it comes up in mixed order but today we'll be using uh, chapter 1 and 2 notes and then the, the lectures um, the video lectures from last year uh, these are the ones that you can look at for especially the classes that I'm not here so <coughs> um, one and two we'll talk about chapters three and four and uh, these um, you can actually because we are going to be doing some of the stuff in this one today uh, you can actually go into it like up to 14 minutes and start from 14 minutes and then go on and then the, this, these two have some problems but not a lot, I mean sort of towards the end of the, the recording so um, yeah you can give it a try and it will cover a lot of the topics in chapters 5 and 6 and then these are other uh, later lectures but you can of course look at them as well And we get lectures for 2014. Uh, they will be posted on Himalax again. And um, if we, if you go to 2013, you get to see the same listing of lectures that are on YouTube. So it's just uh, it's not labeled so nicely. <coughs> <coughs> so again, everything points from this page. Okay. Um, the weekly exercises, these are the ones that are not required. But if you want to work on something while I'm gone, uh, these are the exercises. <coughs> and you can send them an email to me. Okay, now these are the required exercises. Just one, two, three, very simple. So the first one um, should do on October 22nd. And you write a report and you send it an email to me. And uh, you should have it done by nine in the morning. It should be in my mailbox on the 22nd because when we have that lecture day, I'll probably talk about it in the lecture. Yeah? Well, we made a mistake, so you expect. <laughs> um, just answer the question. <laughs> it doesn't, there's no set uh, amount of pages, but like if you write it all in one page, probably not really completely addressing the question, but it's, it's more like, um, it says here you should write a paragraph or two about the AI systems, organization, labeling, navigation, and search. And maybe you want to write a paragraph or two about each one of these things. And then uh, you want to uh, pick uh, one of these sites to write about, for example. So it doesn't mean like it's going to be extremely long, but you need to you need to be have the these assignments approved. So if I see that you did did it basically, or you know, basically address the question, then it's approved. If it's not approved, then we have to <coughs> I have to give you it back and say we have to do it again and that it has to be approved before we come to the end of the semester. So this is gonna be where I'm gonna list people's names and then the exercises that you've done. And then uh, if it's a pass, you get a P. If it's not 
uh, um, if it's not to pass, will you send it in or not read yet? I put Y or N. If I want you to do it again, I put R. So then um, that will give you an indication if you have to send it again. And if you don't do the one, two, three by the end, then you don't get on the list of people that can take the exam. So it's basically you have to get the assignments approved. Um, and like I'll put this list here. I'll keep updating the file with your names. And uh, when I was getting to the exercises, like this one, depends how many people we have here. Like I guess there's about 15, 16 people here now. Um, then some of these areas, people might be doubled up. But I will first assign people individually, and then if we run out of areas, then I will assign people to these as well. Okay, and so this is also, <coughs> uh, it can be done as groups of two, but then like I will assign you, if you want to work in a group of two, then I'll assign you to one of the groups of two that I have there. So there's certain, certain areas that can be more work than others. And then this one, um, uh, you, you need to be able to present the topic in class again. So uh, this is on November 5th, and you need to send me something written about this by 9 o'clock in the morning and be ready to present it in the lecture uh, on that day. So it's necessary that you're around for, or somebody in your group is around for the November 2nd, and November 5th rather, and also for November 26th. November 26th you'll be broken up into four groups, and uh, you'll be <coughs> interacting as groups, and this explains the um, the project. So um, it says in this assignment, uh, you should conduct three uh, phases of an <coughs> information architecture pro um, process, research strategy, and design. Your group has two roles: being a information architect consultant firm running an IA process and being a firm needing a new website. So this is to indicate uh, when you are the firm, you're going to interview this group. And if you are this firm, this group is going to interview you. So there's going to be, you're going to have to interview each other. So when you're this one, you interview that, interview that group. And when you're this group, you int this group interviews you. OK. And then when you write a report, you are writing a report as a consultant for this group. And this group is writing a report as a consultant for you. Okay. But what uh, you have to do here it will become more clear as we get on, on in the semester. Because at this point, you know, know what <coughs> these processes are, the research, the strategy, and design. But that's part of the chapters in the book. So basically, you need to deliver three assignments in the semester, and then there's an exam at the end, and your grade is based on your exam. Um, yeah. uh, if you want to get in touch with me in September, you need to send me an email, because I'm not going to be in the office at all. But I will get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, after that, I'm in room A150. And you can drop by with questions if you want to. But um, as long as I'm there, I'll be willing to receive you. OK. Um, this uh, top page is in Norwegian as well. But uh, all of the underlying materials are in English. <coughs> I should say at the end, um, I write the exam in English, 
and then translate it to Norwegian, get someone to check the Norwegian, and then you can answer in English or Norwegian on the exam. So, um, but I prefer book more. <coughs> so we'll see. Um, but anyway, you can answer in English or Norwegian. Uh, for the projects also, <coughs> you can do things in Norwegian, but um, just remember you're going to be interacting with people and not everybody speaks Norwegian. I think I'm glad to do that. Are you any of you not Norwegian? Yeah, okay. So that means it's like half the class is not Norwegian, so it would be helpful in the exercises if you communicate in English. Okay, so now we'll just um, go to the lecture schedule. Um, or not the is there any questions about how things are organized? Yes, um, assignment number one is on your own. Okay. Assignment number two, you can choose to work with one other person. Mm -hmm. And on assignment number three, you will be assigned to groups of uh, four groups. So depending on how many we are, you'll be broken up into four groups. Okay. And you can indicate on the sign-up sheet that's going around if you want to work with somebody. And then I can do that when we're <coughs> organizing the final groups. Um, I think uh, the book is actually a very easy book to read, so uh, it shouldn't be um, too hard to do, and it's been used for quite a number of years in information architecture. It's, it's the um, book of um, by default for most courses. Mm. Lectures, okay. So here we go today. Okay. So there is uh, actually another set of notes up here that is, uh, or there's uh, five sets of notes on this website that were written by Hans Fredrik uh, two years ago, <coughs> and they're just um, kind of outlined for each of the sections of the book. And what I did was I made additions to that original set of notes here. So it's uh, that and some other uh, additional notes. But today we'll talk about chapters one and two. And this is also uh, available in case you missed out on something. This is the page we just looked at. These are the lecture videos for 2013. These are the lecture videos for 2014, and this is my email. Um, yeah, so we already went through much of that. Okay, so the objectives of part one of the book, which is supposed to be chapters one, two, and three, is to talk about defining what is information architecture, uh, the concepts of practice in inter information architecture and users needs and behaviors and uh, understanding users needs and behaviors means understanding who the customer is and how they think and how they make decisions and how they behave 
And then also the understanding that the needs will change over time and it's not a static process, but you will need to, <coughs> you need to go through cycles of design. Okay, so information architecture has a lot of um, analogies in it, uh, making use of metaphors, and I can't see this so well here, but I was just at a conference and the main building for in the University of Groningen, Netherlands, I don't say it correctly, it's just called like <laughs> Groningen, Groningen or something like that, <laughs> but anyway, um, it is 400 years old been using this building for quite a long time. And then they, in the same town, they have an art museum. And that's not so old. Uh, so different kinds of buildings, different for different kinds of purposes. And so we make analogies between um, websites, designing websites, designing information spaces, and designing of buildings. They both have aesthetic features, what looks good, what doesn't look good. Uh, they also have <coughs> uh, functionality issues. How are they supposed to be used? And does the design fit the intended use by the intended group? Some uh, websites are personal websites and they don't have to have the same kinds of functions and features as business websites. So you have to know who your audience is, what the um, domain is all about. And then there's uh, reliability. In architecture, you don't want the building to fall down. In uh, information technology, you don't want the website to crash. So that's an issue as well. So in the book also talks about other types of metaphors like information ecologies and that has to do with um, <coughs> um, all of the important stakeholders within an information system uh, could be the users the technologies involved and um, the actors the networks and also in the knowledge economies comparing um, information systems to economies, digital libraries, the use of the concept of libraries to understand how you organize and find information, and virtual communities to understand how networks of people communicate. So uh, metaphors help us to structure our perception and understanding of these concepts. It helps If we understand one area, it helps us to understand another area, like information architecture. So if we look at the uh, words separately, we really don't come up with the real meaning. Uh, you can see from the Merriam-Webster dictionary that architecture can be the art and science of designing and creating buildings, the method of style of building, and they also have listed uh, the ways in which part of a computer are organized. Uh, they don't even mention how information is organized. And then uh, Merriam Webster also says information is knowledge that you get about something, facts or details about a subject. You'll see in our book it ha takes a little bit different definition than this. So um, what we say in the book, or what um, Morville and Rosenfeld say, is that Information is between data and knowledge. Information is, uh, <coughs> data is maybe the facts and the details. And uh, information is how you organize that data for a certain use or task. And then knowledge is something that people have inside their heads. And you want to be able to make use of information to make decisions. So information would be placed between the data and the knowledge. Also, we have that information is, um, <coughs> it says that it's a service that people can call up to find out somebody's telephone number. That's an old uh, use. People used to, uh, an old service. <coughs> so this doesn't really tell us what information architecture is. 
but more than Rosenfeld, they define this on um, in their book. And they say that the, the key words here, let me see, to get a pointer. <coughs> the combination of organization, labeling, and navigation schemes within an information system. So the key words here are organization, and labeling, and navigation. So we'll be talking about in, in the chapters in this book and in your exercises how these three areas are designed and implemented. And then the structural design of information space to facilitate task completion and intuitive access to content. content. So this is about <coughs> structural design, that's the key here, and uh, how you structure data to complete a task or to facilitate a task. It's the art and science of structuring, classifying websites and intranets to help people find and manage information. So the key words here are also um, structuring and finding and managing information. How do you make use of, how do you, how are websites useful and how do you find the information that you need? And then an emerging discipline and community of practice focused on bringing principles of design and architecture to the digital landscape. So the key word here is community of practice because it's the community and all of the groups that are involved in the design, not just the information system by itself. So <coughs> what do information architects do? They understand user and system requirements they design and build organization, navigation, and metadata systems, and they evaluate the user experience. So this is kind of a, <coughs> a cycle. You find out what the users need, you design it, you build it, and then you evaluate it and see if it works as expected. And after you do that, you usually go through the cycle again because the user's needs keep on changing. So <coughs> information architectures uh, sits between the data and knowledge management, and this is what we said before. Uh, data, facts, and figures, and knowledge is something people have in their head. And the information is how you organize facts and figures to make it useful for knowledge makers, for uh, decision makers to, to make use of the knowledge in their heads, and make decisions. <coughs> so it's about structuring, organizing, and labeling. And when we say structure, um, you can also look at uh, page five on the book. So you can see that these notes co correspond to this uh, place in the, in the book as well. And um, <coughs> when we talk about structuring, we're also talking about the granularity of the data that we're talking about. So are we talking about a, uh, a SMS? Are we talking about a 1,000 page document? Uh, are we talking about a database that's based on uh, product information and some, sub and some view of that database? So it's uh, how are you going to structure the information and what size information are you talking about? Mm. Organization is about grouping, and this is how do you form categories and um, and group things together. So if I need to find out about running shoes, uh, I want to on a commercial business website. I need to put in certain categories, and I will get a certain group of hits on that on that search and if I say I want um, men's running shoes I'll get one set of hits get women's running shoes I'll get another set of hits and maybe if I go by brand name then I get another set of hits so it's how do you group the information and then labeling is what you call the categories and this is an important issue because 
It also <coughs> plays a part in how you identify or find the information. So finding and managing uh, information that's usability. Uh, different, different features can be built into a website to enable you to find information. You can have navigation bars, you can have search fields, um, you can make use of metadata and taxonomies. So there is like a chapter that talks about this as well. And then it's an art and science. So understanding user needs involves uh, experience, intuition, and creativity. And understanding user needs also involves processes and methods. So you could have a quantitative method for collecting this information. How many hits to a web page? How much time do people spend on the web page? Um, how many pages do they have to go through before they come to the sale page? That's quantitative data. You could also have qualitative data, which has to do with interviewing customers, getting feedback from customers somehow, and experiencing the situation yourself. What do, if, what do the customers have to go through what, in order to make a purchase? How many steps do they have to go through? What's their experience? So this is uh, different ways of assessing the organization of the, of the website. Okay, um, in the book on page six, table one one, they talk about this. And so um, they sh also show a picture of the uh, Gould Book Arcade. And it looks like a table that's full of books that are thrown all over the place. And um, so they were saying that to find a book in that uh, book arcade is very difficult. You can browse through and just see what's there, but if you're looking for something specifically, it's very hard to find it. Um, you can compare books to websites. Um, so they have different types of characteristics. And a book will have a components like <coughs> cover, title, author, chapters, uh, page numbers, index, table of contents, and websites that have navigation bars, a top page or main page, links, content pages, sitemaps, indexes, and searches. Um, the dimensions of the book are two-dimensional linear, read it from start to end. Then the concept of the website is that you don't necessarily follow one path. Everybody can follow different paths through the website or hyperlinks. Boundaries, you have uh, tangible boundaries. That means that the authors have uh, researched some information. They've included that information in the text. And everything that that book is presenting is basically confined within the, the text. But the borders between um, different websites uh, can can be blurry and, and not clear. So you might be getting one service on a website, like ordering some product, and then be sent off to a PayPal site for pay-in. And so then you're not really sure whose information you're looking at. Uh, and then, uh, I guess getting back to this picture of the um, bookstore versus the library. Uh, libraries are very uh, organized. They have a, a, um, a system for being able to look up and locate where, where the books are. You could think about this uh, um, Gould's uh, Book Arcade. If they had, for example, an RFID chip in all of their books. You might have like an app that would be able to locate where the book is on the table because you have this organized information on the on a database and then it locates where the book is and it maybe 
deep as you get closer to the book. But even if you did that, um, it would still be harder to find re related topics on the table because the book would be responding or the RFID tag would be responding to your, <coughs> your, uh, your app. And um, if you wanted to get another book on information architecture, it may not be in the same area. So there's different kinds of browsing or searching that is supported within the library. In the libraries, you can look up the book and you can find where it is on the shelf. And when you find where it is on the shelf, there's also related books that are next to it. And if it gets, um, can be cross-referenced into other areas, so you can search on subjects and you can still find it. So there's uh, different ways that libraries and websites are organized and, um, and different types of uh, purposes. The library is a uh, well-defined collection and websites are not, um, or even the internet and websites in general, websites between providers are not centrally um, managed. So you have access to content and products maybe for a company within one site, but there could be collaborations between sites. And um, we don't know um, if it's, all, it's not all designed for the same purpose. And then we have the heterogeneity. Um, we have um, different kinds of printed materials or um, physical materials, even uh, music and, and videos. Uh, but on the websites, there's all kinds of file formats that go beyond the physical file format. And then again, this is centrally uh, organized and controlled. And this is often decent decentralized and not uh, controlled by one group. So uh, the book talks about what is uh, information architecture, what it isn't. And um, there are specialities in, in uh, education and in jobs that are, people are just graphic designers or uh, human computer interface interaction designers, usability engineers, experienced designers so happen to be like all of these things combined, software developers, content management, knowledge management. So it isn't any of these things alone, but it has some of the elements of all of these uh, tasks. And if you're working at a small company, you might not um, be able to have somebody that does one of these jobs. You might have to get someone to do all of these things. So some knowledge of information architecture is useful uh, regardless of what type of, if you have these types of jobs. And then um, why should a company spend time and money on information architecture? Uh, what is information, what is um, the return on investment and why does it matter? So you could think about <coughs> What happens if you're running a website for your business and you cannot find the right information? How much does it cost to actually uh, manage and design the site so that you can find it? And how much does it cost if you cannot find the information? Uh, what is the cost of education? Uh, the book talks about educating the consumer. If you educate the consumer, uh, then they know more about your products and then they are they more likely to purchase your products? What is the cost of constructing the website and maintaining it? So if you construct it the wrong way, uh, do you have to redesign it and construct it again? Uh, if your data grows significantly, how do you manage the data? And then uh, cost of training and the value of brand, the customer's uh, experience and their impression of your brand. So now I want you to do this exercise. Take out your telephones. And um, I want you to find an example of one of these types of costs. And then I'm going to ask you about it then after the break. So 
can find that and if the has anyone not find the the paper here So um, I want you to look up something. Uh, we can take a break now, and we'll come back at 10 after, because we're starting at 5 after, at 5 too. So 10 after we come back, and then we'll talk about this when we come back. I'm just going to stop this. <coughs> 